Imagine freedom. Imagine the world as you know it is yours to control. Imagine being the expert at something that has unlimited financial potential. Imagine your life changing with a click of a button. Imagine every day can be a lotto ticket. And imagine you can do this from anywhere in the world. Imagine Ayanti. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Weekly Watchlist with the Chartist. This is Q from Ayanti Trading. Today we're going to go over the three stocks that I posted last Monday for the stock market. I said to keep an eye out on these three stocks because I believe that they would break out uh, sometime this week. The three stocks were ADMA, INAP, and CBL. Like I've stated in my previous videos, I really don't know what these companies do. All I'm looking for is for some kind of movement on the chart to make it look like they're appearing to break out sometime soon. Two of these three stocks broke out. That's not bad. That's a 66% win rate. So if you set your proper uh, stop losses and you set your proper times to exit the stock for profit, then you should have walked away profitable from two of these three stocks. So without further ado, for this video, I'm going to go over the charts from the previous five days for these three stocks on how you could have traded them for profit, when would have been a good time to exit, why did we pick those alerts at those resistance points, and just to cover some questions that can help you trading in your future career in the, in the trading community. So let's go ahead and get started with the first stock, which is ADMA. So it looks like ADMA got a 6% increase from the time that we had alerted it at $3.87, it reached all the way to $4.10. So that's a total of a 6% increase or 6% profit that you could have gained on the stock. And it looks like it's trying to move back up. I don't think it will. I think it will make another uh, possible pullback before breaking over that $4.10 mark. But it looks like it's still very much an active stock. So I would keep it on my watch list for next week. But for this video, the first question we ask is, why did we set our alert at $3.87? So when we had posted the watch list on Monday evening, which was right here when I'm where I'm pointing to with my cursor, we set an alert at $3.87. Why did we come up with that $3.87? Well, we had to zoom out a little bit further. We went to the 10 day, 30 minutes, and we looked at the previous resistance point for the stock, which happened to be right up here at $3.87, where I'm pointing to with my cursor. And so that's $3.87 in which the stock clearly resisted on one, two days, and the stock got pushed back down. And so it looked like the stock was gaining a little bit more momentum end of day on Monday. Therefore, it looked, uh, it looked like the volume was gonna keep pushing it up the next day. So we set an alert right over here at $3.87. The stock obviously broke above it and gained just enough bullish action to keep going up. As you can see, bullish volume keeps increasing per bar and eventually breaking up all the way to $4.10 just a few days later. Now, if we personally have traded the stock, we wouldn't have held overnight. Obviously, you know as a day trader that holding overnight is pretty dangerous. But if you did, then you would be lucky enough to have a lot of profit on the stock from the $3.87 mark. That's about 23 cents on a penny stock. If you've bought a couple hundred shares, you know that that's a lot of money. And so with that being said, the stock has kept going up, but now we're seeing a sign of a reversal. Where is the sign of a reversal coming from? It's from the RSI. As you can see, the stock here has made a high and it's made another higher high, but the RSI went down. That's a bad sign. That's a bear sign. So the stock is likely to pull back sometime real soon. The next question we ask is how you could have traded the stock the same day. So for this one, we're going to go into the five day, one minute. And we're going to go into the day in which you would have traded the stock, which was this day right over here. So the first thing you see is that the stock resisted a little bit at $3.87. You can see the stock kind of moved sideways at $3.87 before making this gapping gap candle 
right at this uh, right at this spike. So as soon as the stock spiked, the volume also spiked and it pushed it higher. So this would have been the best time to get into the stock right around this area. And then your stop loss, which leads us to our next question, should have been set right under $3.87. So probably around $3.85 or $3.84. That way the stock has a little bit of room to go up and down before it spikes up again. And so if we zoom back in here, you are safe in this stock as long as the stock goes up. You remember, you already have that stop loss in, in place. And really, the only time in which we see a bearish sign that would have made sense to exit the stock is this r long red wick candle right over here. But even then, they did not have enough volume to generate a bearish pullback on the stock. What happened was right here at the top, when this stock made another higher high, again, we see another bearish divergence, which is a clear sign for you to exit out of the stock and walk away with your profit. You could have risked it a little bit longer, but then you would have lost a lot of profit. The stock did try to move up again, but it looks like it still got resisted and pushed back down. So that's how you could have traded the stock within that day. Um, it could have been a very profitable move. Um, it did make a 6% increase. That's a lot of money, you know, when you have a couple hundred shares in a penny stock. Um, and then finally, I want to say that the stock is, cre is creating a triple top, it looks like, from the past movements it's had. You can see the stock make one high and then it's made another um, same level, around the same level high, and then again around the same level. So this looks like a triple top. So I don't think the stock will keep going up before a strong pullback emerges. But it doesn't hurt to keep it on your watch list. This is something I de definitely keep an eye out for. Um, and maybe wa read some news articles to see if there's any in anything interesting happening in that company. So the next stock is INAP. On this stock, it looks like it never broke above our resistance point. But I do want to point out that there are two resistance points that we would have been looking at for this stock to actually be tradable. So the $3.50 was just a not an entry point. It was almost just as a warning that the stock is starting to gain some traction. Obviously, at the end of day Monday, when the stock tried to go above this point, the stock got resistant and pushed back down. So it doesn't even make sense to look at the stock if it doesn't break above $3.50. When it does go above $3.50, now we want to look for it to break above its previous high, which happened to be at $3.59. Therefore, you would have entered the stock after it breaks $3.59 and set your stop loss right in between 0.59 and 0.50 because that is a safe area to put a stop loss on. And then you would have rode the stock all the way up till you started seeing some kind of reversal. I'm not going to go too much into the stock because it didn't actually break out. But um, let's see if it's actually still imminent to a breakout. Um, I don't necessarily see anything interesting happening in the stock anytime soon unless it breaks above $3.33, which happens to be another res resistance point. So I'm going to actually set an alert at that point. That way I can uh, you know, get that notification if the stock does indeed go above that specific resistance level. Watch it for another breakout and watch it for another breakout. And finally, the last stock is CBL. So let's see what happened with CBL. I have here in my notes that CBL made a 14% increase. 14% and this stock only costs $1.12 when we had posted it. So that is a very impressive move. 14% on a $1 stock can make you a lot of money. So we posted the stock on Monday afternoon. So after the stock market closed on Monday. And we set the alert at $1.12. So the first question we ask is why did we set our alert at $1.12? And that is because that was nearly the highest point that the stock reached on Monday, right before we actually made the watch list. So this stock, Monday had already closed when we made the watch list. And the highest point the stock had hit was around $1.12. And so we set our alert somewhere around these lines because we knew that if the stock breaks above that $1.12, now it's a worthwhile stock to look at. And so this was end of day Monday and then this is next day Tuesday. So the stock on Tuesday actually opened up at $1.15. Could you have gotten into the stock then? Sure, but that wouldn't have been a safe bet. So what you would have wanted to do is you want to keep the stock on your watch list because it obviously opened up above that resistance point that you set for it and you wait for the stock to make some kind of bounce. It's not 
it's very normal for a stock that's going to be a bull for the day to have some kind of pullback right in the beginning of the day before it actually makes its big breakthrough because those are just shorts trying to cover um they're trying to get that stock lower that way you can make more profit on the rise and so the stock did have that pullback however the stock it resisted at a dollar and ten cents around there before this long green candle happened you can see how big this candle is volume spikes stock keeps going up it looks like there's a little indecisiveness in the price between the bulls and the bears stock keeps going up more bullish action more bullish action and finally you get a lot more bullish bullish volume before the stock keeps going up so at any point you could have entered the stock right over here and set your stop loss around a dollar and 12 cents so if you were more of a risky trader you would have held the stock towards the end of the day because it still looked very bullish and you could have held for the stock to keep going up however it would have been dangerous to keep holding even to this point because there's not really a telltale sign that there's going to be a, bull a bearish reversal so i would have personally sold the stock at a dollar and 20 the day previous uh, and not held till Wednesday. Although the stock made it all the way up to a dollar and twenty-eight cents on Wednesday, it doesn't mean I would have held overnight. What you could have possibly done is you would have set another resistance point from Tuesday, knowing that the stock's highest point on Tuesday was a dollar and twenty-one cents. So if the stock, the highest point was at a dollar and twenty-one cents on Tuesday, you would set that your alert around that area and wait for the stock to break above it, in which the stock does. And this would have been your telltale sign that there is a bearish reversal coming. This is a very strong and decisive candle followed by a red wick candle, a very strong one. And the stock keeps going back down from that area. So anyways, that brings us to the end of the three stocks that we had covered in the previous week. Um, I hope you find these help these videos helpful. If you do, please subscribe to the channel. Again, this is Q, a.k.a. The Chartist. One more thing I want to mention about markets this week is that um, we're coming up on a very interesting week. A lot of banks are starting to announce earnings. You're also going to get Microsoft and I believe Netflix. So that's really going to set the tone and it's going to be a very interesting um, play out because let me pull up SPY. The chart for SPY is above 3000. That is for the first time in history that that's happening. We're seeing the stocks keep going up, but the RSI is starting to go down. And it's really got me wondering if how performance of these companies, these banks is going to uh, affect the market when it's already at all time highs. So if the stock, so if these companies do present good earnings, will we make higher highs? You have to be very careful not to rush into anything, not to jump into anything, because just because Netflix has great earnings doesn't mean that the obvious is there, that the market is obviously overbought. Um, I'm not saying it's not worth it because I'm not going to get into it, but the market is obviously overbought and it needs to have a strong pullback soon. So be very careful on good news this week because it might actually affect the market worse than you think, especially that most people think that if the Federal Reserve is cutting rates, it's actually good for the economy. That's very twisted. It actually has something completely different to do with the economy. It's not necessarily good that we're still lowering interest rates because that can really hurt us in the future but that's just my personal opinion but anyways um i hope you guys have a good trading week it should be an interesting week i'm definitely going to keep an eye out on these major companies and these major bank announcements um and i'll have another watch list posted sometime tonight sunday night or tomorrow uh, after market closed monday anyways guys have a good trading week and subscribe to the channel if you did like what you see and tell your friends about what we're doing share our videos we're just trying to help you become better traders